Good morning to everyone and welcome to this uh, weekly ISS briefing. This week we are talking about Mali, where, where on June 20th last year a peace agreement was signed, yet there are difficulties in the implementation of uh, this agreement and therefore we are trying to um, look at the situation seven months after the signing and let's look at the security situation in the country. What is the situation in Mali right now? Well, we cannot only look at the current situation, but we need to go back a little bit in order to understand the um, dynamics that uh, brought uh, the situation of this agreement. Therefore, we are going to talk about four main points. In the first part, I will talk about the background before coming to some uh, milestones of the past few months, what we can qualify as progress or not. The third part, we'll talk about the challenges of and the obstacles to the stabilization of the country and finally I will talk about some uh, thoughts about the implementation of the agreement as well as stabilization of the country situation. I hope everyone can hear me well. I will try not to speak too fast so that the interpretation is uh, flawless. And as I said, the first part will talk about the background. First of all, it's important to remember that this peace agreement is one of the very rare uh, three parties or tripartite uh, peace agreements where we have three parties, the government, the CMA, and the platform, the platform which is a group of armed groups who are trying to reach the uh, uni unity of the country. So there are two coalitions of armed groups and the, uh, the, um, the government. The uh, agreement was also not typical because it happened in two phases. The first phase took place on May 15, 2015, and there we had this uh, signing ceremony where the government and the platform, the platform of the armed movements which are uh, looking forward the uh, unity of, of Mali, as well as two movements, let's say, uh, rebel movements of the coordination of movements of Azawad, at least two movements which decided to participate at the signing on May 15th. On the one hand, we had the, the CPI, uh, Coalition of the People of Azawad, who are a part of the coordination of movements of Azawad, and also uh, the CMFRP2, which is one of the two armed groups which uh, is a part of the SMA, Coordination of Movements of Azawan. The signing, as you can imagine, did not uh, allow to um, find an agreement for all of the actors uh, in the fighting in Mali. Therefore, there was a decision of uh, having a second uh, phase, which uh, the movements, all the movements of uh, Azawad were actually invited. This was on 20th June. And uh, it was on this date that the uh, representatives of the CMA signed the Agreement of Peace and Reconciliation in Mali. After this uh, signing, uh, two conclusions can be uh, t uh, reached. First, that the 20th June signing of uh, the agreement did not allow to finish or to end the fighting in the north of the country. Actually, more uh, fights happened 
between the two main coalitions of armed groups, CMA and the platform, on the other hand. The second uh, conclusion, important conclusion that we can reach, is that these uh, two-phased signing and the management of this agreement um, actually um, paralyzed the works of the S CSA, which is the organ of supervision of uh, the implementation of the agreement. And this because um, s some actors, mm, such as the CMA, uh, did not agree to see the two uh, movements at the table, these movements that actually signed the agreement of May 15. So this is the, the, the background. The second part is uh, on the milestones or the more important uh, happenings of the past few months. And here we need to ask ourselves, are these milestones actually a progress, political or security progress. And first of all, I would like to speak of ANIFIS. Uh, some agreements were signed at ANIFIS, which is a city in uh, the religion, in the region of Nikidal, where some community uh, meetings took place between August and October. And that these meetings took place after the increasing of the tensions between Mali, mainly the two coalitions of our movements. After very intense fightings, the, uh, there were meetings between the main Arab and Tuareg communities that took place in this uh, city edifice trying to uh, fix this situation, which was pretty much uh, um, a proof of uh, the Alger proceedings uh, failure. So there were uh, mainly uh, representatives from the political military leaders of the armed movements of these uh, nomad communities, this mainly nomad communities. However, since this, uh, since the end of these uh, meetings around mid-October, no important incident has taken place. This means that no uh, further fights happened between these coalitions. Therefore, Anifis actually uh, permitted what uh, this, um, what uh, the Alger proceedings didn't allow for this peace reaching. In the belong of the beyond the security itself, there are further, um, uh, let's say, uh, uh, progress beyond the 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 security le level. There were also poli political, um, let's say that there were some rapprochement uh, after the peace agreement signed in Bamako because these were not recognizing, the two parts were not uh, recognizing the legitimacy of, the, of each other, let's say. The CMA was criticizing the platform and the platform considered that uh, the CMA did not, was not the, um, the only one uh, who had the right to um, claim the north of Mali. Nowadays, we can see that these two coalitions actually get together to issue joint uh, press release or uh, even uh, to condemn the uh, terrorist attacks uh, suffered by their fighters, FMAA, or even the MINUS MADI uh, international mission. Uh, so this is... Um, and they also... Um, I would say that Anifis 
improve the security situation among between the armed groups, preventing further um, fights. It also allowed for a political rapprochement and it allowed for a new um, energy, let's say, to uh, come into the committees that uh, follow up on this agreement. However, ANEFIS did, uh, did not only present uh, positive points, it also has weaknesses. Like I said, all the northern communities were not present at ANEFIS. It was mainly the Tuareg um, communities and not even all the Tuareg communities, some of them played quite um, quite a, a secondary role in this meeting. This is mainly um, an agreement made by the political and military leaders, those who uh, held power, whether military or financial. We're talking about uh, traders, uh, but also traffickers. Besides the fact that uh, this importance of, um, of these discussions, these uh, uh, leaders, we must uh, emphasize the fact that these agreements are really happening because of the will of these uh, strong characters, let's say these are really leaders who hold not only military and political power, but also financial powers. These, these people, these personalities uh, have not really shown mm, much, um, let's say, they have not proved to be uh, stable and uh, yet now uh, they hold in their hands the fate of the North Mali and this is already we can we cannot really trust uh, them to uh, think about the, the, the benefits of uh, Mali and uh, then we also okay, uh, this, the second point I would like to make is um, the um, the cantonment process which uh, took place in the region of Gao and Likrabar and in Tumbuktu and this uh, had an impact on the RDD and uh, this is uh, this title that this is important in the RRD. We must say that besides the technical aspects which prevented the implementation of this um, provision of the peace agreement, uh, it's also the lack of political will. And then we must recognize that uh, in both sides were not really in a hurry for the cantonment process. We must also speak of the uh, the, the, the we must say that this cause this building of cantonment sites will does not reflect the political will. It is really important for the um, stakeholders to really invest in the implementation of this agreement and finally with the technical and financial support which happens from MINUSMA from international community this should be coupled by political will at uh, the level of the different stakeholders this will should uh, be upheld by discussions between the different parties to clarify the fate of the ancient the the um, from the fighters or soldiers so this process needs much more transparency uh, the third point i would like to speak of in this um, let's say uh, 
part is talk about some of the decisions made by the governments who is probably trying to show its good faith. So there's a theory. Uh, in October, there was a series of uh, laws or decrees that the government actually um, nominated. And this is, uh, for example, the nomination of the governors of the regions of Menaka and Taudeni. And um, this decision is uh, a decision that took place before the crisis. This decision was made in 2012, but uh, this decision was never acted upon. And the governors were, uh, as were nominated, and these are the, uh, now we are talking about these five uh, regions of uh, North Mali, five to three. And uh, although this is a first step towards uh, the nomination of uh, provisory authorities to take care of uh, the North region management, this is an important provision of the peace agreement who is supposed to happen on uh, these, this uh, stage uh, 18 to 24 month and um, this uh, is looking to restore trust between the parts the, the, and to prepare the future. And uh, also to set this, the, the place for future elections. There is also some decrees regarding the nomination of uh, of the uh, police commissioners let's say and the uh, beside and the also the the let's say the commissioner of uh, the truth justice and reconciliation commission and finally, the National Committee in charge of uh, the agreements follow up. Therefore, this uh, search, this aim at uh, uh, assuring transparency and to restore trust between the different parties. The 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 Truth, Justice, and Reconciliation Commission um, is it's still not clear what is the efficiency of this commission because uh, the commissioners were named in conditions which were not completely transparent and these uh, commissioners are most of them affiliated to armed groups and this procedure actually lacked some transparency. So therefore, this commission is a bit politicized, which actually paralyzed its work. And this um, is, uh, is regretful for the follow-up of the peace agreement, but also for the stabilization of the country as a whole. Uh, we can see that even though uh, important and positive uh, steps were taken or are being taken, the decisive uh, actions have yet to come. We can see that these are just like steps forward, but we are still lacking the real, real, uh, let's say, uh, game changer to happen. to actually implement the peace agreement and uh, to bring forward the next steps which will have a stronger impact on the on the peacekeeping and stabilization of the country as for the temporary uh, as you may know 
since May 2014, the state needs uh, partners on the field with which it can eventually work in order to to offer, to deliver uh, basic uh, social service as well as every single reform that has been considered or taken into account by the peace agreement, such as the peacekeeping among the population. But um, it needs to be much more present in this region and therefore the state needs partners and these partners could uh, be represented by these armed groups which uh, can actually um, go about in these uh, spaces where the state is mainly absent. I'm talking about North Mali. The third part of uh, my uh, presentation today is on the, we'll, we'll touch upon the obstacles or challenges and we're not just talking about the, the implementation of the agreement but uh, generally in regards the stabilization of the country and here we need to um, remember that be, be, beyond the political will of uh, the stakeholders a very besides the political will there are other uh, challenges uh, from the uh, financial and security uh, perspective. And very quickly, because I see that time's going by, we are talking about the th terrorist threat, which is extending itself from north to south, going through the center which is um, a very worrying situation because from the security point of view, uh, for a very long time, this area was forgotten, neglected. There uh, was a very clear focus on, um, on the north of the, of the country and therefore all the political and security actions were actually targeting the north, assuming that the center uh, not uh, suffering the uh, crisis, but it uh, actually has become uh, an area that was affected directly by uh, the situations in 2012. And the consequences of this uh, negligence is that um, whole communities are completely out of the uh, of uh, of the authority of the Malian state, and we can see that the governor of the Monti region is not capable of moving around in the region without uh, the MINUSMA protection and even with the MINUSMA protection he is not able to move freely in all the region that he is responsible for. So this uh, extension of the terrorist thro threat, uh, we can see that uh, this is uh, also targeting the international forces, the armed forces of Mali. We have seen spectacular actions such as the hotel that was uh, targeted recently. And another important fact is that even some uh, stakeholders uh, uh, in this peace procedure are uh, starting to become the target of these armed groups and here I specifically speak of the attack of uh, the MNLA who uh, in um, at the end of December 2015 among the other challenges which have an impact on the implementation of the peace agreement we see the increase of the of uh, criminality rate in the the country and the insecurity uh, factors are not limited to the terrorist threat or even to the threat that the, the armed groups can present besides that we see an increase in criminality and this is uh, much more violent because uh, weapons are so easily accessible in North Mali and because uh, the administration is not present in some areas. And uh, 
we also need to think about the problems of uh, funding the uh, a few weeks ago in Alger in a, a meeting was held in order to to um, give some energy to the implementation of the peace agreement and uh, the the topic of funding was uh, was uh, touched uh, this is an important challenge because uh, many projects or measure of, uh, or or activities are linked to funding so in spite of these uh, promises that have taken place many times in Brussels and elsewhere we can see that they are really slow to to become a reality and finally I wanted to um, add some comments that we can think about this is rather an overview regarding uh, the implementation of the agreement but also regarding the stabilization of Mali after the day after the signing of the peace agreement and quite uh, earlier than the than the than these results a part of the inter in the, the stakeholders in the algae processes were actually linked to a lack of a ownership of these proceedings by the Malian population so all along the negotiations there was a sort of fear regarding the reception for this peace agreement by the populations mainly the northern populations um, there was a fear uh, of that the uh, agreement would not be successful because of a lack of a, of um, ownership and this is why there was also the meeting of NSF but other meetings took place in the region of uh, to explain the peace agreement because it was felt that it was needed to insist f so that the populations would actually own this agreement but if you visit today the north or the center of the country and you talk about the different populations there you will realize that uh, besides any reserves they might have any um, oppositions that they might have on certain topics there is a real enthusiasm about the uh, agreement among the populations and enthusiasm that we can see in the impatience that these populations have to see the fruits of peace and therefore it's important to take this opportunity to actually carry out short-term activities as well as long-term activities these activities that can actually um, uh, reach uh, some uh, goal and actually give some peace to these regions so that we can actually st take steps stronger steps uh, in the population and where these steps can be felt at long term now regarding the short term steps we must absolutely increase the speed of the cantonment process this requires political will the political uh, stakeholders need to uh, actually present more enthusiasm more activity but also there should be much more support from the international community on the field consultations should also start for uh, the, the nomination of the provisory authorities because like I said earlier some parts of the uh, territory are completely outside of the control of the administration of the Malian state and therefore it's very important to actually create partnership with the uh, stakeholders with whom uh, we can work towards the uh, stability 
and also we need to think about the the tools of uh, provisory justice Be, for example the uh, uh, truth justice and reconciliation committee there are others also um, if there is a very clear uh, horizon others can uh, quite quickly uh, take place I would like to stop after these uh, thoughts or these ideas that I present to you the best way to take Mali out of the crisis is probably to improve government this sounds quite simple but I know this is very difficult this governance improvement in Mali must take uh, must uh, follow multi several dimensions uh, political steps which might uh, also be taken into account in the peace agreement we are speaking specifically of uh, bring uh, closer the administrations of the different regions or the uh, to achieve uh, more real decentralization but also the uh, security aspect and we do not uh, only have to think about the ter terrorist threat in Mali we also need to consider this uh, this uh, important uh, problem of trafficking which is uh, nowadays actually uh, like hidden below the carpet because some uh, uh, negotiation actors might be also involved in this trafficking therefore we don't talk about it yet it's important to actually consider important steps to uh, fight against this trafficking because nowadays in the north of Mali the main uh, um, examples for the Malian youth are these uh, traffickers who are achieving uh, great wealth through their illegal dealings and it's very important to show them that there are other possibilities than uh, to succeed through trafficking this is a very deep reform which is needed and uh, need we need to avoid falling back to the past unfortunately we see that even administration agents we don't have the feeling that uh, things will change because we are tempted to go over the same uh, stories of the past and uh, we have this tendency of uh, just uh, coming back to the actors which are linked to the government instead of going through n in m newer uh, steps which would have a much stronger impact on the field I will now stop and open the floor for questions and comments